Okay, so I'm going to take you through how to mod a Java jar file, specifically Minecraft.jar, the launcher, because it's it's pretty small, it's not obfuscated, um, so it'll be a perfect uh, way to uh, demo this for you. So here I have Minecraft.jar, and I can open it using 7-zip, it's just a zip file, and it has a it has a really typical jar layout. You have the meta inf and a bunch of classes. Um, I can even open Minecraft.exe, which is the Windows executable in 7-zip, uh, because it is it's just a jar with um, some uh, executable packaging. Um, I'm going to use JD GUI to decompile. So you just start it up. Uh, let me resize this for you. And we'll take a look at my preferences here. Uh, so escape Unicode, emit this prefix, don't display line numbers uh, because they it injects it in the source code files, it's really ugly. And then just go ahead and browse to the jar that you want to modify, in our case minecraft.jar. And open it up and on the left here, just as easy as that, you'll see all of the source files. So here are the, what, six classes that make up minecraft.jar and it looks like perfect, perfectly rendered Java source code. So we're going to go ahead and save all sources and it'll zip them up and save them uh, because but most of the time the, the Java classes have interdependencies on each other so we're going to need all of the sources to start with. So just take that zip file that JD GUI makes and extract it um, and we're going to uh, build a Java project around it. Use your favorite Java editor. I, I like to use IntelliJ IDEA. It's the best, in my opinion. So I make a new folder. I'm going to extract all these source sources there, and then I'm going to fire up IntelliJ and import it as a new uh, IntelliJ project. And it'll give me lots of nice syntax coloring and things. Um, the LZMA and the metainf file um, are just extras. They're not the actual source code themselves. They're a part of the jar. So since we're just going to compile this and inject it, we can delete those. So here you can say I'm, see I'm, I'm creating from existing sources. I'm specifying the folder that I um, extracted to. And just as easy as that, I didn't need to specify any special options. I just I let IntelliJ wrap a, a new project around it and I'm good to go. Okay, so we can see our source files over here on the right. Net.minecraft is the is the package, and you can see the one, two, three, four, the five, six classes. So here's login form. This is the one that I'm going to want to make modifications to. Um, so I opened this up first, and uh, let's see what JD GUI did. So this val string variable name you're going to see often. It, that's the original name of the variable and it usually means that there was some sort of scope issue. So I just take that out. Um, action listener doesn't take a parameter but JD GUI leaves them in there. Um, okay so what the real problem was is this needs to be marked as final so IntelliJ will do that for me. I just hit Alt Enter. I'm going to take this out and do the same thing here. Okay, so that fixed that problem. Uh, this is another common thing JD GUI does. It repeats variables, so that's really easy to fix. Just take out the, the duplicate lines. Let's see, what next? Here's another duplicate. Just take that out. Okay, you can see on my right-hand bar there, it's all yellow, and there are no more reds, which means that this should now compile. So let's see what else we have. Okay, I'll just start with the first class here. We can see there are some more red sections on the right, so let's scroll down to the first one. And it's another easy one. You can see the buffer size variable has been uh, repeated again, so we'll just take that out. It's easy. Okay, what else? Ah, 
see more valve string instances. Again, this probably means it needs to, that these variables just need to be marked as final. So take out the valve string. Um, yeah, okay, IntelliJ automatically tells me they need to be declared final, so I hit Alt-Enter and then let IntelliJ automatically mark them as final. Now here, a new thread doesn't take any, doesn't take any parameters, so I just remove these. And again, JD GUI does that, but it's, it's easy to detect and fix. Okay, so now it's down to just one more red here. Duplicate variable, take that out. Luckily, there aren't that many classes in this jar. If you were modifying a much larger jar, obviously it would take a lot more work to go through each and every dependent class and get it to compile. Um, so again, you want to strip away as many classes, as many files as you can, um, so you can hurry up and, and get to uh, recompiling the, just the, the classes that you're interested in. Wow, that's a lot of duplicates. Okay, some more weird string things. So that's probably, again, the, the original um, variable name that just didn't get cleaned up. So we're going to try just stripping that all away and, and hoping that that works. Get platform.ordinal, take that away. Yeah, and that looks much better. Working directory, that's a duplicate. Okay, let's find the next next problem. Duplicate, easy. Now this is interesting. The throw local object. You'll see local object from time to time, and it really it, it kind of depends on the the individual case. So here I'm I'm taking a look at this method. And you can see that in all of the return, in all of the paths, in the execution paths, there's a return. So in the try catch, it returns. The catch returns null. Finally, doesn't need to return anything. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this because it looks like it doesn't, it's not supposed to be there anyway. And that looks like it should be fine. All right. Okay, launcher looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and compile, and uh, let's see if there's anything that's missing. Nope. Everything, all, all the classes compiled, that's great. Okay, so now that we have that, we can get to the fun part of actually making our modifications. Um, the first thing you should do is just run it vanilla to make sure that it's working the way that you expect it to, and here you can see that it is. I click login. Um, Minecraft.net is down right now. That's that's not like a problem with my file or anything. In fact, that demonstrates the mod I want to make. I want to make that login button. If you notice, when, when I clicked it, nothing visibly changed. There was no indication that the launcher was trying to connect. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that button become disabled and say logging in uh, while it's trying to log in. And then after that, we're going to try to auto-login if the user's name and password have been saved. So now I get to make my actual mods here. OK, I've made my modifications. I've added this show trying login message method and the restore launch button method here, which enables and disables the, the launch button um, when you click it and when it's trying to log in and then restores it if login failed. So let's go ahead and I'm going to run this here, test out my mods. You can see the login button is a little bit wider now. Click it, it becomes disabled. It says logging in, it failed, and it restores itself. Perfect. OK, so my changes work. And I'm able to test them. I can use the debugger if I want, um, and it's working great. So now. Uh, after the login form 
gets created after all of these action listeners are applied, I'm going to try to auto log in. So down here at the bottom of the constructor. And actually, what I noticed in the decompiled code here is there's already a method that tries to auto log in. It's called check auto login, but it's never used. As you can see here, uh, my IDE marks it as gray to show that it's, it's not used anywhere. So it looks like it was put in here and it's just not been enabled. Okay, so once the form, so the last thing that the form will do is it will try to auto log in. So let's run that. Whoops. Okay, there's an MPE, and what happened here is uh, the connection is refused because Minecraft.net is down, and because this exception got thrown in the constructor, the form never actually displayed, which may have been why that method was never used in the first place, but that's okay, we can fix that. Instead of putting it in the constructor, which is kind of a dumb place to put it, we'll put it in the launcher. Um, that way the form shows itself, uh, then the launcher goes ahead and tries to do the login, and then the form will show the, the error messages or the success messages. So here I'm also gonna make it where when auto login occurs, uh, the button is disabled, so the user knows what's happening. Okay, here in the launcher, um, after I set visible the launcher frame, I try the auto login, as you can see in the bottom of the main method. Okay, that worked much better. The launcher displayed, it auto tried to log in, login failed, it restored the login button. I can click it again and again. Great, so my changes work. Now, on to the last part. So we've decompiled. We got our code working. We modified it. Now it's time to inject these modified classes back into the original jar. So first I make a backup. Now I'm going to open the original jar. Whoops, I double-clicked it. Actually, yeah, open this with 7-zip, there we go. Okay, browse into the folder with the original classes, which you can see down here. And we're just going to update the classes that we changed, namely the launcher frame and the login form. Those are the only things that we touched. I'm gonna browse over to my my Java folder where I've been doing all my work and go into the output folder where uh, IntelliJ has been putting my my compiled classes. Select the launcher frame and the login form stuff which is our updated classes. And then I'm just going to drag and drop these into the jar. Okay, now I'm going to close this and, and see what happens. Okay, double click the jar. Whoops, that's not that one, that one. There we go. Okay, it says it could not find the main class. Now, I'm going to reopen the jar here, and in the meta inf folder, there are a couple of what I think are signed files here, the DSA and C, the, I mean, the, the DSA and the SF file. So I'm going to delete those so it, it doesn't refer to them. And there it goes. It auto tries to log in. The button becomes disabled. Okay, so my changes worked. The um, executable jar works, everything looks good. Okay, we did it. So that's how to do a basic mod of a Java jar file. Um, this was my first YouTube video, so I hope you were able to follow along. Um, thanks for listening. Bye.